The night of Super Bowl V was a grim reminder to the Dallas Cowboys of another dream drowned in defeat. But bitter memories faded before the bright promise of a new season and a new stadium in 1971. Texas Stadium, a jewel mounted in the flatlands of Dallas, was the finest football facility in the world and the new home of the Cowboys. Dallas blazed through the preseason undefeated, and the players sensed this was to be their year. There was no talk about just going to the Super Bowl again, but winning it. So on September 19th, their path to a championship began in Buffalo. While the defense faltered, the many splendored Cowboy offense exploded for seven touchdowns that blitzed the Bills, 49 to 37. The next week in Philadelphia, Tom Landry saw his team trample the Eagles, 42 to seven. While the offense scored with seeming ease, the defense was simply devastating. After two weeks, the Dallas Cowboys had scored 91 points and looked unbeatable. The season's third week saw the Cowboys' myth of invincibility shattered by the undefeated Washington Redskins, who ran away with a 20-16 victory. Monday night beckoned a huge national audience, eagerly awaiting a blistering display by this super team from Dallas. What they saw was less than awesome, as the Cowboys eked out a lackluster 20-13 win over the New York Giants. The growing doubts about Cowboys superiority in the East became a reality when the Saints, led by rookie Archie Manning, scrambled past Dallas 24 to 14. After 11 years, Dallas said farewell to the Cotton Bowl and began a new era at Texas Stadium. The Cowboys' record stood at 3-2, and, and the New England Patriots were burned at the home warming. From the sudden surges of Walt Garrison to the liquid grace of Dwayne Thomas, Dallas used a dazzling array of runners to bludgeon the Patriots. Dallas mustered a convincing 44-21 victory, and their clumsy trip to Super Bowl VI was rerouted again. But Week 7 brought the Chicago Bears, who seemed to cash in the Cowboys' last hand in the NFC East. Chicago hit hard, while Dallas did not. While Bobby Douglas, the untamed big blonde quarterback, made every big play, Dallas made none. The 23 to 19 loss left Dallas with a dismal four and three record. It was almost as if they were witnessing a grisly instant replay of all their past failures. Their collective collapse left them with only a scant hope of reaching the playoffs.
Dallas had been beaten in the past, but they rarely had beaten themselves. During the first half of 1971, the Cowboys made the brutal mistakes of also Rams, not champions. appeared that the bright glow of September and the promise of a Super Bowl championship were just fool's gold in their search for El Dorado. 1971, a sweet season gone sour. The second season of the Dallas Cowboys spawned a desperate fight to the finish. They almost had to win all their games to survive in the East. Seven games remained. They would play two with the Cardinals and one each with the Philadelphia Eagles, the Washington Redskins, the Los Angeles Rams, the New York Jets, and the New York Giants. At quarterback, a choice was made. Roger Staubach replaced Craig Morton. Against the Cardinals, Staubach's unscheduled flights left defenders dizzy as Dallas came from behind to win, 16 to 13. A stubborn defense blended with a conservative offense combined to defeat the Eagles as Dallas won its second straight. 20 to 7. And then there were two. The Redskins' grasp on first place was just a half game, and the Cowboys came to crush the Cinderella team. Like two heavyweights, they slugged it out for 60 minutes. Both teams left each other bruised and battered, but through the stretch, it was the doomsday defense that was dominant. Finally, the war of nerves was settled by Staubach, who led the Cowboys on a furious race to glory. Thanksgiving Day brought the Los Angeles Rams, and Dallas ran on the rookie legs of Isaac Thomas.
Thomas's 89-yard touchdown provided the margin of victory as the Cowboys swept to their fourth straight win, 28 to 21. Against the New York Jets, Thomas's touchdown and the opening kickoff set the tone for a fantastic flurry during the final three games. Dallas scored an incredible 125 points in these three games and clinched a championship. Using every weapon in their bottomless bag of tricks, the Cowboys overwhelmed the Jets. The next week in Yankee Stadium, Alex Webster witnessed the thorough destruction of his Giants. While the Cowboys' mammoth running backs, Calvin Hill and Dwayne Thomas, tore through the guts of the Giants' defense, Roger Staubach twice unleashed a tried-and-true Cowboy tradition, the bomb to Bob Hayes. After the 42-14 ROP over New York, Dallas met the Cardinals in the season's final game. The Cowboys blazed to a championship on the flashing feet of Dwayne Thomas, who scored four touchdowns in the 31-12 rout of St. Louis. From the chaos at midseason, the Cowboys had clawed back to win seven straight games. The spirit came from their offense, defense, and specialty teams, from kickers Mike Clark and Tony Fritch and punter Ron Woodby. Forty men, primed and tuned for the championship series. The dealer of the Cowboys' seven-game shuffle to the playoffs was Roger Staubach. Raw in experience, but ripe in leadership, Staubach assumed command of Tom Landry's intricate offense. The heart of the Dallas attack was its running game. There was number 32, Walt Garrison, who used his body to billy club tacklers on his runs up the middle. Like Garrison, number 35, Calvin Hill was a body beater. At 6'4 and 230 pounds, Hill was a forbidding figure to a cornerback in the open field. When injuries robbed Hill of a half season's worth of games, Dallas had multi-talented Dwayne Thomas to replace him. Thomas was a resourceful runner who never hurried but flowed along on silky strides and then evaporated through the secondary. The other runner in the Dallas backfield was Roger Staubach. A sixth sense told him when to abandon the pocket and bust out on planned runs that withered defenses.
fronting Staubach was an unmatched offensive line. At center was Dave Manders. The guards were Blaine Nye and all-pro John Nyland. At the tackles were Tony Lissio, Ralph Neely, and all-pro Rayfield Wright. These men were the sturdy ramparts behind which Staubach picked apart defenses piecemeal. Staubach possessed a versatile variety of receivers. There were the Siamese twins at tight end, soft-fingered Billy Truax, number 87, and rock-hard Mike Ditka, number 89. At one flank was Lance Allworth, still the Bambi who bounded off the scrimmage line, still running meticulous patterns ending in touchdowns. For running under the rainbows, there was Bob Hayes. Total concentration, sure touch, and sprinter speed has made Hayes a finished receiver. The Cowboy offense, pro football's pinball machine, lighting up scoreboards for 406 points in 1971. The eyes of Texas also focused on Bob Lilly and the imposing doomsday defense. Lilly, number 74, parlayed quickness, instinct, and a steel grip into the best of his 11 astonishing years. Working in tandem with Lilly was tackle Jethro Pugh, number 75, a mean man to meet in the open field. At the ends were Pat Toomey and starters George Andre, number 66, and Larry Cole, number 63, who worked in deadly unison. The middle linebacker was Cobra Quick Leroy Jordan, number 55. The outside linebackers expertly infiltrated the passing lanes. There was D.D. Lewis and starters Dave Edwards, number 52, and all-pro Chuck Howley, number 54. The linebackers formed a perfect partnership. Jordan, number 55, Edwards, number 52, and Howley, number 54. A vintage blend of old pros. Behind the linebackers was the deep defense. At the corners, protecting against the home run, were Mel Renfro, number 20, and Herb Adderley, number 26. Roving over the middle and cutting off the run was safety Cliff Harris, number 43. Blitzing up the middle was Cornell Green, who necktied runners with reserve safety Charlie Waters, number 41. At the snap, they all came hard. 11 arrows flying straight to the bullseye. So after 14 games, both elements of the Dallas Cowboys were finally polished and fully motivated for the final test in the playoffs. In Minnesota, the Cowboys plundered the purple with a defense that greedily glad-handed every Viking mistake. The defense bent the Vikings' will. Then the offensive line caved in the purple gang and Dwayne Thomas ran through the breach. Thomas's touchdown, two Mike Clark field goals, and Staubach's scoring strike to Hayes in the clutch 
gave Dallas 20 big points. But in the end, it was their defense that did in the Minnesota Vikings. After their 20-12 victory over the Vikings, Dallas came in from the cold and met San Francisco. In the first half of the NFC Championship, the Cowboy offense turned stale and was led to slaughter. But it was another day for the defense, and they played flawless football. The turning point came when John Brody sought out Ken Willard, but found the looming specter of George Andre instead. Calvin Hill converted the turnover into a touchdown, and then Roger Staubach cut through the 49er defense with a series of bold strokes. to three triumph was the last stepping stone to their appointment with destiny in Super Bowl VI. In New Orleans, the Cowboys met the Miami Dolphins and played what many called a perfect game. On defense, they came and crushed, hit and hounded, and never allowed Dolphin runners a slice of freedom. offense, Roger Staubach's leadership was never more evident as he passed the Cowboys to their first score. In the first half, Miami buckled. In the second half, they were buried as Staubach sent Garrison Thomason Hill through holes as broad as a boulevard. Dwayne Thomas scored the second touchdown and Mike Ditka the third as Dallas won this super slaughter 24 to 3. For Dallas, 1971 was the year that the big lie died. After years of climbing, they had reached the summit of their sport. But to the Cowboys, it may not be a summit at all, but only a beginning. This is the measure of a world's champion.